Good morning. In Revelation 16, we read John's vision about the final seven plagues that are poured out to conclude the Great Tribulation and usher in the second coming of Jesus Christ, who will rule forever. Amen. As John reveals the horrible judgments, if anyone is tempted to question God or his actions, verses 5 through 7 provide God's defense. Not that he needs it, but we do. I'd like to read it again. And I heard the angel in charge of the waters say, Just are you, O Holy One, who is and who was, for you brought these judgments. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and you have given them blood to drink. It is what they deserve. And I heard the altar saying, Yes, Lord God the Almighty, true and just are your judgments. They are. And thank God that as his redeemed family, we are spared from his wrath because of what Christ suffered for us on the cross. So we read these judgments and how are we to respond to them? Verse 15 gives us some insight. Listen to it. Behold, I am coming like a thief. Blessed is the one who stays awake, keeping his garments on, that he may not go about naked and be seen as exposed. Lesson one, Jesus is coming again. We are to anticipate it, for it gives us hope about the future. Coming as a thief is the idea of being unexpected. No one knows the day or hour, but we do know he is returning. And we are to be prepared for his arrival. Uh, like a bride waiting for her groom to come and take her home to be with him. We are to talk about it uh, so that unbelievers will consider what is to come and believers will be encouraged to endure. Jesus is coming again. Say that with me. Jesus is coming again. Verse 15, blessed is the one who stays awake. Stays awake, that's one word in the original. It means be watchful. It could be used in the context of a battle. Uh, the watchmen keeping an eye on the battlefield and potential enemies or dangers. Uh, they'd need to stay awake, uh, remain alert, be aware in his or her duties. Jesus' exhortation, Jesus is coming. Be alert to potential devilish dangers so that you're not deceived or defeated. I encourage you to read Revelation 3, 1 through 6, where Jesus speaks to the church in Sardis and elaborates on this theme. Let's finish verse 15. Keeping his garments on that he may not go about naked and be seen exposed. Well, that imagery is designed to convey a spiritual reality. What are we clothed with? The righteousness of Christ. What's the Lord saying? Walk in righteousness. To walk in sin is likened to walking about naked and exposed. Now think about it. We don't want people to see our flesh, our carnal natures. We want them to see Christ's righteousness expressed through our words and ways. We're all tempted to speak in the flesh, to act out in the flesh. Keep your clothes on. Walk in the righteousness of Christ that you've been given to clothe you. I mean, really, no one benefits from seeing your flesh expressed. But blessed are you and others as Christ's righteousness flows from your words and ways. Oh, that it might be so today. I'd like to close in prayer, and then our praise team is going to lead in worship if you'd like to linger a little longer. Lord, thank you for loving us and saving us. Remind us, Jesus, that you are coming again. Help us to be watchful and prayerful and walk in righteousness by your strength. Thank you, Lord. Suddenly articulate With a thousand tongues to lift one cry Then from north to south And east to west We'd hear Christ be His name.
Would you stand and sing it with us this morning? God's people this morning. Let us make this bridge our commitment this morning. I won't bow to idols. I'll stand strong and worship you. And if it puts me in the fire, I'll rejoice because you're there too. I won't be formed by feelings. I hold fast to what is true. And if the cross brings strength, then I'll be crucified with you Cause death is just the doorway Into resurrection life And if I join you in your sufferings Then I'll join 